There are many new players coming to Genshin Impact, and by proxy, there's a whole fresh batch of free-to-play players that don't have a ton of 5-star characters to build in all of their teams. There's a common misconception with Genshin Impact that you need to spend money to clear the hardest content, but that's simply not true at all. There are plenty of characters that are obtainable for free-to-play players that are also capable of clearing the hardest content when put into the right team setting. So today, we're going to be going over three amazing 4-star only teams that you can use to clear high-end content. I won't go into each character's individual build, but I'll be giving some build tips throughout the video if they're different from what's standard from that character or what I put into my character guides. Do know that most of the guides that I have up on my channel are still relevant for build help, so if you're confused on how a character works or their build for these teams, go ahead and check out the guides in the video description, they're way more detailed. Lastly, though these are three amazingly strong teams utilizing only four star characters, they're not in any particular order, and you may find for different abyss cycles that certain teams are better or worse. For example, in this abyss cycle, because of the Golden Wolf Lord in the second half of Floor 12, all of these teams take a massive hit to their usability since you would need to force a Geo character to clear in time with 3 stars. Gotta hate that dog. With all that being said, my name is Braxophone and here are the top 3 free to play teams that you should build in Genshin Impact. The very first team I'm going to be showing you guys today is the Taser Comp. This team features Sucrose, Beidou, Fischl, and Sing Cho, and is known as one of the best free-to-play teams that doesn't use Bennett. The concept of the team is simple. Beidou is an insanely strong off-field carry unit who's able to consistently deal electro damage with her burst and utilize her elemental skill to dish out a large hit of electro damage. Fischl will deal fairly high electro damage while also generating energy particles to use Beidou's elemental burst more frequently. Sing Cho will deal high single target oriented damage with his elemental burst and constantly apply hydro to enemies, which is going to let you proc the electrocharged reaction for extra damage. While his burst is up, you'll also have damage reduction and get a bit of healing back. Now, Sucrose is in this team for a few reasons. She can use Viridus and Venor to lower enemy resistances to hydro and electro when they're swirled, and she also has elemental mastery share, which can add some decent damage to all of your reactions. Since hydro and electro can be on enemies at the same time, you're able to get consistent double swirls with Sucrose to add to your overall damage damage output, and reactions. For artifacts with this team, everyone's gonna want their standard setup. Beta wants a combination of 18% attack bonus, 2-piece, and Thundering Fury, 2-piece Noblesse, or a 4-piece Emblem of Severed Fate set. You can use Thunder Soother, but I wouldn't recommend farming for it just because it's hard to get a 4-piece set, and it's basically only used in Electro Charge teams. Fischl wants attack percent sets, 2-piece Thundering Fury, or 4-piece Thunder Soother as well. Everything else as far as builds go is pretty standard. If you want more details, check out my build guides for those characters, where it shows weapons and everything else. Another note for this team is that Sucrose actually wants to use Sacrificial Fragments in this team. She doesn't want Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, but not necessarily because TTDS is bad, it's because you get more damage out of Sucrose than you would see damage improvement by snapshotting the Thrilling Tales buff onto Beto. Specifically because you are constantly swirling with Sucrose on the field and the swirl damage really adds up, especially when you stack Elemental Mastery. On top of that, it also batteries Sucrose a little bit, which lets you use her burst more often. However, if you do decide to build Thrilling Tales on Sucrose, you can give the attack buff to Beto before you use her burst, and that will give her a massive attack buff for the entire duration of the burst. Now, rotations in this team aren't as important as you'll find in other Genshin teams, mostly because both Electro and Hydro can be on an enemy at the same time, so you're not missing a ton of damage if you do things a bit out of order. That being said, there's two rotation options on screen currently if you want to follow those, one with Thrilling Tales and one for Sacrificial Fragments, courtesy of Azel from Kaching Maids. The next team I'm going to talk to you guys about is one of my favorite teams for free-to-play players because it is just so much fun and so satisfying to play. This team is the Reverse Melt Quick Swap team, featuring Bennett, Shang Ling, Rosaria, and Kaya. The concept for this one is fairly simple to understand and actually really easy to execute, even if it sounds complicated. First off, we run Bennett so his burst can be snapshotted by the rest of the team to give them a buff for the entire duration of their burst. On top of that, he's able to battery Shang Ling very well and actually works with C6 in this team if you do happen to have it because you want to have pyro applied to enemies at all times. As for Shang Ling, she applies an absurd amount of pyro and just deals a ton of damage in general. She also gives you pyro resonance for an attack bonus for the whole team. Now Rosaria is able to apply cryo once Shang Ling's already gotten pyro on opponents for reverse melt damage. It ends up being a lot of damage when you add it up, and honestly the animation's just kind of cool, so like why would you not want to play Rosaria? Kai is in this team because one, he's free to play, and two, he's able to generate a decent amount of cryo particles for Rosaria, and vice versa, Rosaria 
Ray can also generate cryo particles for Kaya. Between him and Rosaria, you won't really have a lot of issues on uptime for bursts. And on top of that, Kaya's burst has the standard internal cooldown, so he's not going to be stealing Pyro Aura away from Xiangling. Now, if you want to play Reverse Melt Quick Swap, there's a couple things that you need to know that are fairly important, one of which actually being rotation. Now, a lot of the more casual player base is actually scared off by rotations, but let me tell you, the one for this team specifically is just really easy. You don't have to put much thought into it, it's a lot of the same thing over and over. In general, you're going to want to use Bennett's Burst into Bennett's Skill. Now, with Bennett's Skill, you're going to swap to Xiangling and use her Burst. And the reason that you're using Bennett's Skill right before then is so that you can funnel Pyro Particles into Xiangling right after activating her Burst. Then, you're going to drop Guoba, you're going to switch to Rosaria, and you're going to use her Skill to give you some crit rate and to deal some damage to enemies. Right after you use her Skill, you're going to use her Burst, where the Melts will really begin to deal some damage. After you use Rosaria's Burst, you're going to switch to Kaya and use his Skill, followed by his Burst to deal even more damage. Now, after that, you can basically just repeat the same thing over and over until it's time to go again. You're going to use Bennett's Skill, then Rosaria's Skill, then Kaya's Skill. And after maybe one or two times of doing all of those, you should have your Burst back on every character in the team, and then you can start again with Bennett and just do the same thing that you did before. Now there's a couple things to note here and this is going to be pretty detailed, so. The first thing that you want to know is that you should always use Rosaria's skill before Kaya's skill. Kaya's cryo application is stronger, so he's going to actually remove pyro from enemies when you hit them with his skill, whereas Rosaria's skill won't actually remove it. So if you use Kaya and then Rosaria, you're not going to get to melt both hits, but if you use Rosaria then Kaya, you can melt both of their attacks and deal a lot more damage. Now as for artifact setups, there's a ton that work for this team. You want your strongest set for damage dealing to be on Rosaria over Kaya since most of the cryo damage will come from her. Most of these characters can run 4-piece noblesse, 2-piece noblesse and an elemental set, a combination of attack bonus 2-pieces or 4-piece emblem of severed fate. You can also run a damage based set on Bennett with Crimson Witch since you'll be spamming his skill when you can, but I like noblesse on Bennett since it gives a 20% attack bonus at the start of the rotation and lasts throughout his entire burst. And in general, I wouldn't really recommend Instructor over using noblesse because Bennett will also be dealing damage in this setup, and Instructor is a 4-piece set which does gimp his damage by a little bit, and Bennett's not going to be reacting most of the time, so the 4-piece set effect won't really always go off. I'm personally running 4-piece Emblem on Shangling and split sets on Kaya and Rosaria, with Rosaria having the better substats. The biggest thing here is to make sure that you're not running two characters at the same time with 4-piece of Noblesse, since the effects will not stack. You will only get one Noblesse effect per team, regardless of how many 4-piece Noblesse characters that you have. For weapons, the only thing that's really different from standard setups is that Rosaria can use Dragon's Bane very well, and Kaya can take good advantage of Lion's Roar. However, you should always prioritize being able to crit over getting the weapon bonus, because crit is always going to net you more damage until you can build crit with just artifacts, and then you can focus on switching the weapon to something that applies damage bonus. Now, something else that you can do is you can also give Rosaria an Elemental Mastery Sands, since Bennett is giving her so much attack, and Elemental Mastery is going to improve your damage. However, just be aware that you don't want to run EM Sands with Dragon's Bane in most cases, because if you're using Dragon's Bane, then attack percent Sands is usually going to get you more overall damage, and Elemental Mastery does fall off when you get it to be at a higher threshold. I also don't recommend building Elemental Mastery Sands on Kaya since he has standard ICD and will still be dealing non-melt cryo damage a lot of the time, so it's going to be good to get his overall cryo damage up instead of just his melt damage. Lastly for this team, you can replace Kaya with Shenhe, Burst Damage Ganyu, or Chongyun if you have them. With Shenhe, Rosaria can actually snapshot buffs from Shenhe's passives, and the quills will buff Rosaria's damage significantly. Shenhe is actually a great character for this team. Now the third team shouldn't come as a surprise to most regular viewers of the channel, but if you are new around here, I'm about to tell you about one of the easiest team comps to play in the entire game that sees some of the highest play and is one of the best free-to-play teams, if not the best free-to-play team in the game. The team I'm referring to, of course, is the National Team, featuring Bennett, Singcho, Shangling, and Sucrose. Now similarly to the Melt team I showed you guys before, Bennett is in this team to buff whoever is on field and provide a 20% attack buff from Noblesse. He's also going to generate Pyro Particles for Shangling just to make her burst ready more often. Singchal will vaporize his skill after Bennett's burst and make enemies being attacked have a Hydro Aura, making Shangling's damage increase from constant vaporizes. Shangling in this team is to provide a ton of area pyro damage and carry the team to victory with the help of the Stove God. And lastly, Sucrose will swirl both pyro and hydro to debuff enemies with the Viridescent Venera artifact set. She'll also share elemental mastery with your team, giving Shangling even more damage with her burst. On top of that, Sucrose holds thrilling tales of dragon slayers to give Shangling a buff when you switch to her, which can 
be snapshotted with Bennett's buff and Noblesse to make Shangling deal just absolutely insane damage. With this team, you want to start off with Bennett's skill and burst, follow up with Singchaw's skill to vaporize for high damage, and then activate his burst, use Shangling's Quoba, Sucrose Swirl to debuff enemies and group them, Shangling burst with Thrilling Tails buff, Noblesse, and Bennett buff, then use Sucrose normal attacks and skills to deal reaction damage and debuff more enemies. After, you want to use Bennett to get both his burst back and Shangling's, and repeat a similar process. That's the simple way to explain it, but a written rotation is on screen if you want to pause here and practice it. For builds, you want to use Noblesse on Bennett, but if you're below AR45, I would try to see if you can slap the 4-piece instructor set on him, just for extra elemental mastery for your team. But again, past AR45, definitely go with Noblesse. For Shangling, I like to run 4-piece Emblem of Severed Fate to get her burst faster. On Singchul, I'm running 2 Gladiator 2 Heart of Depths, and on Sucrose, I'm running Viridus and Venera. There are technically better artifact set options for your damage dealers, Singchul and Shangling, but these are my best pieces and give me the highest damage. If you want to know the specifics about building these characters, check out my build guides for them, they're super detailed. This team is incredibly flexible. There are tons of variants on it, with the core foundation being Shangling and Bennett. You can substitute Singcho for Child for a stronger team, where you'd be using Child's melee stance with high damage to let Shangling vaporize. There's also another very popular and powerful variant that involves using Raiden instead of Sucrose, where you don't have to pay much attention to rotation and energy funneling, because Raiden batteries every single character and is also able to deal a large portion of damage in a short time. With Raiden, you're able to vaporize and overload together for massive reaction damage. Honestly, Raiden National is just one of my favorite teams in the game just because it's so easy to play and really forgiving even if you're not doing the optimal rotation. Now keep in mind there are two very important things that you need to remember about this team. One is that you want to give Shangling all of the buffs you can before using her burst so that way she can maintain the stats throughout the entire duration of her burst. And two, you want to make sure you're using Shangling and Singchaw together for vaporize. As long as both their bursts are active at the same time and you're making sure to use some auto attacks to apply hydro to enemies, this team will be insanely powerful. I'm not a perfect player, so a lot of the B-roll doesn't really line up perfectly in this video, but the general idea of how to play the team is there. Also, 12-1 sucks for regular national this time around, but in general, it's just one of the most solid teams in the game, especially for free-to-play players. That about wraps up this video on three amazing free-to-play teams in Genshin Impact. For players new and old, I hope you guys all learned something, and I hope that you enjoyed the video. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like down below, and let me know which of these three teams is your favorite. I also go live a few days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash braxophone, so if you're looking for more Genshin Impact content, live content, or if you're looking for a place to watch the 2.6 live stream, I highly recommend you go follow the channel. We're going to be watching that as it comes out. It's going to be awesome. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I will catch you guys later.